Hey everybody, welcome back around to the blog and grill. I am your host Doug here with your video blog for October 29, 2014. Great blog plan for you today as we'll be talking a little bit about the Heisman Watch, your college football playoff. We'll also be touching on your NFL power rankings. World Series is headed to Game 7 and the NBA has opened up their season as well. So let's get to it. A lot to get to today. Let's first go to the college football, the first playoff standings war were released last night um i think it was a very interesting reveal and it's starting to show us what they're going to be weighing so our top four in the college football rankings are as follows mississippi state florida state auburn and old miss those team those first three are who i had and my fourth team um that i revealed last time out was michigan state i'm su kind of surprised they have old miss in especially since old miss Lost to a team in LSU that they have currently ranked 19th in the polls. I guess they like the win over Alabama, which I do too. I weigh that very highly. But I think if you're going to put Ole Miss in and keep or keep um, another team out, I don't know how you can keep Oregon out over Ole Miss at this point. Yes, Ole Miss beat Alabama. Oregon, though, beat Michigan State. And Oregon's only loss is to a 12th ranked Arizona team, while Ole Miss's only loss is to a 19th ranked LSU team. So kind of trying to figure out how they're weighing stuff, how this committee is going to look at stuff. Um, I think an interesting team in their poll is definitely number seven, TCU. Um, TCU, we know, lost to, blew a huge lead to Baylor and lost to Baylor. Um, Baylor went on the road and lost to the tough West Virginia team, so that's something to look at too. But overall, I think I'm kind of surprised TCU so high. Kansas State's up there at number nine. I would have had Notre Dame and Georgia probably ahead of Kansas State at this point. But we'll keep you up to date. We'll keep an eye on it as well. We'll have a big game on Thursday night with Florida State going up to Louisville. We'll see what happens with that one. All right, time for your Heisman Watch update. Marcus Mariota right now is my top guy in the Heisman race. 68.8% completions, 2,608 total yards, 29 total touchdowns to one pick. He has a 192.2 quarterback rating. My number two guy, Dak Prescott out of Mississippi State, 60% completion percentage, 23.58 on his yards mark, 25 touchdowns, five picks, and a 156.5 quarterback rating. Number three and number four, two running backs, Amir Abdullah out of Nebraska. Abdullah with 1,249 yards wise, 17 touchdowns. He also has two receiving touchdowns and an average of seven yards a carry. And Melvin Gordon for Wisconsin, who has 1,168 yards, 16 rushing, one receiving. All these guys are in the Heisman race, but I think Mariota and Dak are really a lot farther ahead of everybody else. So it's going to be interesting to see who gets in to New York and who doesn't. And right now I think Amari Cooper still could get an invite as well. All right, time for your NFL power rankings. Coming at number five this week, I have the Indianapolis Colts. They had a big one against Cincinnati. Then they get ramrodded by the Pittsburgh Steelers. I still like that team a lot. I think they're going to win a lot of games off Indy at number five. Number four, New England Patriots. Don't necessarily know how good they are. They beat a decent Cincinnati team. It'll be a real barometer game this week when they take on the Denver Broncos. We'll see what happens with that game. But I have Dallas in or New England in at four at six and two. Another six and two team that we're going to talk about here in a minute are the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas is six and two right now. Um, big, not a huge loss, but a surprising loss to the Washington Redskins. I thought they'd play better. Just a little bit off. Um, Dallas has a big game coming up with number two in the power rankings this week, Arizona. So Dallas will get a shot to get back up there. They're in at number three. Number two, the Arizona Cardinals, six and one, really came off a big win against the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll get to try to compound that with another big win on the road at Dallas. We'll see what they can do as Bruce Arians has those boys playing some good football. And number one, and the best team in the National Football League right now are the Denver Broncos. 6-1, and one, Peyton Manning's clicking on offense. I like their defensive weapons. We'll see what they can do, but they are in at number one. So I had Denver, Arizona, Dallas, New England, Indy, my top five. I just want to talk briefly about Tony Romo. Romo went out of that game with an injury and came back in. And basically the way I see it, Romo had to come back into that game. If he comes back in and they don't win the game, but he plays well, 
um, he's a bum because they didn't come back. If he stays out and is hurt, he's a bum because he can't play through an injury. If Brandon Whedon comes in and leads him down the field and wins the game, then you have a quarterback controversy somehow. So it was a no win for Romo. I think it was good he came back in. I think he gave his team a legitimate shot to win that game. They were just out of sync that night and just could not get it done. All right, World Series Game 7 tonight. Royals yesterday winning 10 0. Jordano Ventura looked very good. Tonight it'll be 8 7. I think the Giants will win this game. I think the pitching matchup favors them. Hudson versus Jeremy Guthrie. I think Hudson will get it done. Guthrie will struggle. And I think the Giants are going to win the World Series and lock it up tonight. All right, NBA season getting ready to go. As I said, we'll be covering the New York Knicks quite a bit throughout the blog season. Um, so let's just take a look at the New York Knicks. Who is likely to be their starting five this year? I think best case scenario for the Knicks, they get Jose Calderon to play the point for them. Um, I think Pablo Prigioni is not a very good option at point guard for the New York Knicks. Then I think you'll see... Probably Iman Shumper at the two. Um, you could see Tim Tim Hardaway or J.R. Smith at the two. But basically what I think is going to happen is that, let's see here. So basically what it's looking like is Calderon, Iman Shumper. They have Jason Smith, the big-time power forward, out of New Orleans. Samuel D'Alembert and Carmelo Anthony, okay? I like some of the guys off the bench. I like J.R. Smith. I like Stoudemire, what he brings, and I like Hardaway Jr. <coughs> and I think some of these other guys, like Shane Larkin and Clay Anthony Early, can come in and just knock down a jumper. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting to watch. I like their team overall. I think they're going to be decent. I think they could win 45 games at the most. And I think expectations are not high for this team, okay? You have a new coach in Derek Fisher, who I think is a very smart guy, a point guard in the league. Um, I think he can definitely figure out how to get stuff done at the NBA level. You have Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony needs to not score 29 a game. He needs to score 24 a game and chip in five assists just to make people better. And finally, Phil Jackson. We have to see if Phil Jackson knows how to put a team together. Um, I think he can, and we'll see if this team can do anything to make him look like he knows what he's doing. And if he does, then they're going to be a huge weapon. And he will be a huge weapon moving forward. All right, let's talk briefly about last night's game. Um, our opening game, the Pelicans and the Magic. The Pelicans were just all over him. Anthony Davis was a monster last night. 26 points. Um, just a monster game. Let's see what he put up. 26 points, 17 rebounds, and 9 block shots. I think Anthony Davis could be a top 5 player <clears throat> in the NBA by the end of the year. We saw Ryan Anderson off the bench do some work. We also saw some decent point guard play out of um, Drew Holiday, Eric Gordon, and Tyreek Evans as they run a kind of a funny, a funny roster. So we'll see what happens with them. The second game was a very good one, San Antonio and Dallas. This game came right down. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This game came right down to the end. Dirk put his team in a place to win this game. Chandler Parsons, bad Mavericks debut. Monte Ellis played well, but it came down to Tony Parker, Marco Bellinelli, Danny Green getting it done. And they were very solid, and I like what I saw from them. And I think they're going to be a good team. Mono Ginobili, 20 points off the bench. And finally, in the nightcap, we saw Houston and the Lakers. And really the saddest part about this game was when Julius Randle went down with a broken leg. He's going to be out for a while. Kobe Bryant wasn't great. 19 points, 6 of 17 shooting from the field. 0 of 1 from 3. Uh, 2 assists, 3 rebounds. Not a very good game for them. This team's just really going to struggle to score the ball. <coughs> It's too bad because when the Lakers are good, the NBA is good. All right, we'll be back on Friday. We'll do our football picks for the weekend. We'll, or we'll probably be back Saturday morning. We'll do our football picks for the weekend. We'll talk NASCAR as they head to Texas, and we'll do some other stuff with the Knicks. New, New York Sports Update will be back as well. Um, thanks for tuning in to the Blog and Grill. You can check me out, sportsmindednews.com. 
Also, follow me on Twitter at YankeeBaller415. You can comment, question, subscribe to my page. Thanks for tuning in to the Blog and Girl. I'll be back on Saturday. Have a great rest of the week.